That's a connection. Welcome to a very special, no hards barred, special edition, video only, What If series, JT and Aaron, your hosts of No Holds Barred here every Saturday on the North South Connection. We are simulcast in video and audio for our proper show where uh, twice a month we go through every WWE world title change ever. We're somewhere, by the time you're watching this, at early to mid-1999. Uh, and then every other week we do drafts with our friends. So that's every Saturday at 11 Right yeah. here on the North South Connection, we are here with a new No Holds Barred. Uh, this What If series is kind of as they come. A little bonus drop-ins for you. Today, it's what if I didn't, uh, in 2008, throw out all my WWF magazines? Imagine. Would I be happier today? I pulled out all my... My son has gotten very into uh, basketball and mm -hmm. basketball cards. So I dug out all my binders, and he was just like going through them rifling through them. I'm like listen because <laughs> he is like very much like oh i traded this for this i get this for this. so i'm like i don't want you to trade any of these like you just look at them like we're not going to destroy them so we'll see how that goes but he could trade a set for a few thousand dollars yeah sure you'd probably accept not. that trade <laughs> probably not although i was glad because i found um you know when, as you see them you bring back memories of them but he's a, a slob of course so he left like a whole bunch on the floor when i just came downstairs oh. and um but one of them he left that he didn't take was my like one of the first cards i ever got for basketball was larry johnson rookie of the year hornets card and it's like it was like my favorite card because i love the hornets i love larry johnson growing up and i like i as soon as i saw it, i was like oh fuck i remember this card so i took i pulled it and i put it on my desk so he won't touch it but i was <laughs> i was thankful he left it because i would have been sad if I had forgotten about it, and then all of a sudden saw it, you know, or he See, traded I, it or something. I also loved the Hornets at the time. I had the the gear. I loved Alonzo Mourning. I loved Larry uh, Larry Johnson. You would I, say Larry David, weren't you? Well, I love him too. But um, I say this knowing that I never, ever, ever saw a Charlotte Horlicks game until maybe like three years ago. It's not. It's not your grandfather's. So it's not our Charlotte Hornets. I guess. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it was. I mean, I loved that fucking team so much. Like I watched. Of course, back then you could only watch so many games. Like so, for me, it would be if they were on TNT or whatever. Right. It was like appointment television. Every morning, I'd watch, you know, read the full box score for the Hornets. I was pretty diehard until they moved the team um, to New Orleans, and then I kind of bailed out. But it was really, yeah, they just they kept trading everyone, and it was like they, the owner was cheap, and then they moved, so then they did lost they, me. But did they name them the Pelicans immediately? I feel like they were the New Orleans Hornets for a couple of years. And then they went with a shittier name. Yeah. Well, because then Charlotte, the Bobcats came around right. after that. And they were an expansion team as the Bobcats for a bit. And then they were able to get the Hornets name back. So okay. the Charlotte Hornets do exist again, as you know. But it's what? not technically the same franchise. I don't know if they have the history or if New Orleans carries the history. But It's probably New Orleans. It's like the, the Dallas Stars in the NHL carry the Minnesota North Stars history. And then Minnesota right. Wild is a have their own team. history. Yeah, so I think the new Hornets have their own. They have the Bobcats history and then their own history. Right. And uh, the Pelicans have. Anyway, so this is why you tune in, obviously, to a wrestling. Uh, well, podcast. what if the Charlotte Hornets never went to New Orleans? What if the owner wasn't fucking cheap and got rid of everyone? What if the Expos didn't sell off all their players? Would we still have a team? The Hornets, if they had maintained their team. When Jordan finally retired in 98, they would have been primed in that 99 season. But they had already run off Mourning. Right. They had already run off LJ. And they'd always find a star to replace them. But then they'd run them off. Like, they brought in Glenn Rice. He was awesome. And then they didn't want to sign him. They didn't want to pay him. He left. Like, they kept finding guys. They drafted Kobe and then ended up trading him because he didn't want to play there. But anyway, what could have been? Imagine Kobe and Charlotte. It's a whole different situation. The Blue Mamba. What if? <laughs> What if he stayed in Charlotte? Yeah. All right. So in this one-up series, you and I asked our good buddy Marcus Fuller of the Wrestling uh, WD War podcast every other mm -hmm. Thursday. He does that with me here uh, to throw us some what ifs. We haven't looked, so nope. we're gonna pull that up. We're gonna say what the what if is, and we're gonna have a whatever ten to fifteen minute conversation extrapolating it out. Exactly. Do you want to pull it what out? We got first. No, you read it. I don't even have them up. All right. So let me. Uh... Grab it here. This is actually one of my favorite topics, so I'm really glad he uh, did this one. What if Razor Ramon turned heel prior to WrestleMania 11? Oh. See, and I like this one because it's based in reality, because when I read the old Titan Sinking series, which I highly recommend, they're like, they're like dirt cheap on Kindle or whatever on Amazon. 
Um, and we actually interviewed the author on, on Place to Be a few years back as well about the whole series. Um, he covers those years of like 95, 96, 97. Excellent books. And they talk about that they were going to turn Ramon heel and face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 11 to the point that they had even filmed like vignettes and stuff. And the plan was that Taker was going to like choke Sam him, or Razor was going to choke Sam Taker to a grave or something like that to uh, jumpstart it. Um, I am all in on this. I think he was cooked as a face um, by WrestleMania 11. That's, I mean, to say that he was still super over, like he's still yeah. one of the hottest guys. He always he just was. had nothing to do. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and they were lacking major heels. So imagine a world where Ramon turns heel fights Undertaker and mania, and then is set up for a rematch from the year before with the roles flipped. He becomes the guy to face diesel um, at SummerSlam instead mm-hmm. of Mabel. You know, I, I think you just set up the year a lot cleaner that way. So are you saying that like, well, let's just get into it then. Does he, if he does turn heel, number one, does he beat the undertaker? I think it's possible. It's not, um, it's not impossible, right? Like, yeah, the streak could end there, but I do think, I think the turn and the match help him, even if he doesn't, yes. even if he doesn't win. Like, I think, you know, he has a heart. It's, it's a Ramon. He's bulletproof, whether he's a face or a heel, right? Like, I mean, he barely beats, he wins by DQ at that, right? Over Jared. So like, it doesn't even fucking matter. Anyway, the match yeah. ends up being nothing. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd be, I'd be, we're already in the win column with one less Jarrett and Razor Ramon match <laughs> yes. for me. Like, uh, and I think, yeah, um, and you have get... a reasoning, right? He could be mad about getting screwed out of the IC title mm-hmm. in, in January. So he turns, um, decides to target the Undertaker. He can say, I've been looked over, right? I've been one of your biggest, most popular stars for a year and a half, and I've never got a world title shot. Yeah. I carried this company yeah. throughout like 1994. Yeah. And yeah. that's his whole motivation. I've never got a title shot. And it's legit. He never, never got a title shot, right? So yeah. it's like, that's his pure whole motivation. And I'm going to start by making a statement. I'm going to beat the Undertaker at WrestleMania, and then you can't ignore me anymore, right? Um, and, and then I'm sure, I'm sure they protect under like they they protect him even if he loses right. the Undertaker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. They might even do a DQ or whatever back then. I mean, back then it didn't matter. And this saves us from Taker Bundy as well, oh. uh, right? And maybe it's a world where you don't even build the Allied powers. Maybe Jarrett defends against Bulldog or against Luger or something like that could be. Better or kid. I mean, well, kid was still hurt, right? So yeah. Um, so there's other does, guys you could have put in. Okay, so you're so we're reconstructing WrestleMania. We're, st- we're obviously LT and Bam Bam still there. Diesel Sean is still there, but we do uh, Razor Undertaker. And you know my dream idea. I think I've talked about. I did it on War. I blew it out with Owen trying to read to top Brett from the year before. So you get Brett instead of Brett and Backlund. You get Brett versus Owen, no holes barred, and then um, Owen and the mystery partner against the guns to win the tag title. So he wants to do what Brett did the year before, fight his brother and win, and then win a title. Um, But he ends up mimicking Brett. Brett beats him, so he loses the match, but then he goes on to win the tag titles with either Yoko or maybe you do the Benoit idea, which is one of the ideas too. But um, (laughs) So I think if you just make those changes to that card, Ramon Taker... Jarrett versus, like I said, Luger or Bulldog or whoever you want to put in there. Yeah. Well, you could just do as, as much as much as I would not want to see it, per se, but you could have done Luger, Tatanka in the cage. They do that on the Raw 100 or whatever a few weeks before or a month yeah. before. So you could do Luger, Tatanka in the cage to blow off that feud for good. That's Bulldog. the problem. The problem going into that, that, that whole show is that like the storylines are so based in that million dollar corporation, oh, right? Yeah. And it's like so and like unless you wipe all of that away, you're still stuck with those remnants everywhere. Well, you could do Luger, Luger Backland, Luger racks him and and like gets reignited as a, in a solo run, beating the former champion. Like if you want to give him a win, and then have Bulldog challenge Jarrett for the IC title, which I think that's like a good match. Um, Bulldog coming off a really good Rumble run, you know that could have been pretty good. Takes I the think, Blue Brothers off. Yeah, I think I'd rather do the other way. I think I'd rather have Bulldog fight Backland. And Luger, Luger fight, fight Jarrett. Jarrett. Yeah. Either maybe, way. I, yeah. Maybe give something to Luger <laughs> on right. this run. Um, I think so they then, wanted Jarrett to keep the belt for Sean eventually, but sure. I think you could. I think I think whatever you do with those four guys, that's your pairing. <clears throat> you do yeah. Brett Owen, no holds barred. That was a match they had on Action Zone that was awesome. Like whatever a, a week before. Um, that's their yeah. blow off match. Brett says, "I'll give you one more match." 
and that's it or whatever. And Owen says, I'm going to do what you did the year before. Then you have Owen in the tag titles, um, Razor Taker, and then the two main events. Yeah. And then Razor goes on. To, is he winning King of the Ring then? Yes, I would suppose. But see, you don't have to because King of the Ring, that wasn't a step. So, like, if you still want Mabel to win King of the Ring or anyone else, like. How did Mabel well, earn that then? I, I can't. That's fuzzy to me because I wasn't he watching. He attacks that Diesel at In Your House 2 and then they just, like, name him number one contender. He yeah. doesn't win the title shot at King of the Ring. Okay. He just becomes, like, the top contender or whatever. Yeah, I so, didn't think he did, but there's. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't branch the two together. So, I but, mean, I'd probably have Razor win, but, like. You don't have to like like Razor could just kill someone on the undercard or something like that. You know what I mean? And then yeah, but you know it does play into like the last year. Like the whole thing is like you're gonna make me jump through hoops. Well, last year I went all the way to the finals of the King of Ring. This year I'm gonna right. win it. Like yeah, if that yeah. if that's I mean you could sacrifice it. Mabel. You can still make Mabel a heel without sacrificing Mabel. King. What are we losing? What are we well, losing? Well, in their eyes, in their eyes, <laughs> yeah. you can still make Mabel a heel without doing the King king thing anyway i mean you can still have him be like a top heel can we do one of these what ifs without talking about mabel all right let's stop talking about him so i'd have <laughs> razor wing king of the ring i guess you still you still doing diesel sid for a couple months i mean i guess that kind of stays yeah i guess or in this world which i've talked about before too bigelow doesn't turn face yet he fights diesel you do diesel sit it in your house one diesel bigelow at king of the ring Bigelow finally turns after that. The corporation kicks him out for losing again to Diesel. Right. And then in your house two, maybe you do a tag. Maybe that's where you do a tag with Diesel and Bigelow versus Sid and yeah, you know, I think the tag is gone by then. So maybe it's maybe Sid and Ramon. Sid and Razor. Yeah. Yeah. So Sid and Ramon versus Diesel and Bigelow. And then that's yeah. just up Diesel Razor at Razor gets the pin yeah. on someone. Hits Bigelow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bigelow loses again. And then Teddy Biasi comes out and berates him again. So Razor Razor wins the title at SummerSlam. I think that would be the play. I don't know. I know this. It seems silly to say like we have a chance to end this Diesel reign, but are you willing to give up like Diesel Brett? Yeah, because you'll get like, you know, actually, yeah, because I think if you give up Diesel Brett. What you get at WrestleMania 12, if you let Razor run with it, is Razor Sean 3. Well, it'd actually be Razor Sean 2. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't mind Sean that at all. Beat, I think Sean beating Brett, though, is like the torch passing. Not not if it's not if not in this scenario where like we kind of have a heel dominant champion. Yeah. Like, and, and it's not like they don't have the history, right? Like the history's yeah. there for them to do it, and then you can. So maybe what are you run. doing, Brett, at that mania? Maybe you run Diesel Brett there instead of in your house. Yeah, but then what do you do with Undertaker? But that's you could always move everybody around. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd be all right with Razor. I mean, Razor could you could just take Diesel. You could have Razor lose to Brett at Survivor Series. I mean, Razor could have a two month run with the belt. Brett yeah. beats him at Survivor Series or the Rumble. And then you march to Brett Sean. I think they really wanted to do Brett Sean as like the almost like I, the poor man's Hogan warrior of that jet of the small guy generation. Well, that's just it. But it's a poor man's right. So like, I don't think it'll ever. I, I actually think that like, I don't know if beating Brett did Sean the favors that like. Well, don't forget too. It's not yeah, and it's it's not Razor Sean three right because we're losing SummerSlam ninety five. It would be yeah, Razor Sean yeah, two. Yeah, 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 where Sean would beat him to win win it back right. Yeah. So it's it's actually good that way. I think. If you wanted something interesting to do with Brett at Mania, you could have him fight Goldust. Yeah. Like, that might be cool if you, they actually let Goldust, like, work. Yeah, or you do Brett Taker. Yeah, but then Taker's going to beat Brett again. And Brett and Taker at that – in 96, Brett and Taker, I'm yeah, good. I don't, to, yeah, I don't need to see him. Hey, you lose that, too, if you keep the belt on Ramon. I mean, so I think the big question, though, is if Razor – I guess he probably still gets the big money deal from WCW. But well, if, if he holds the belt till Mania 12, does he feel different? But, I mean, we're also kind of ignoring the real-life stuff. So does he still get popped for drugs and all this other shit, right? I mean, that's that's baked into this. Are we imagining that this title run keeps him a little bit cleaner and he's not – he doesn't get suspended and then leave? You know, like, because that's what kind of dulls him. Yeah, I mean, you got to think that maybe – like, it's going to go one of two ways. Either it's going to get him motivated to, like, stay on the right track 
Right. Or it's going to be the complete opposite where it's like, I'm the champ. I do what I want kind of thing. Right. Um, what, what happens to the one, two, three kid? No more skin cry baby match. He can't, he can't <laughs> heal on Razor at this right. point. He would have been better as a face anyway during that run. Like, yeah. I think he just has way more value as like an underdog. And you could do exciting um, face. Uh, well, you and you could do a match at a either at a I guess at a pay per view at that point. Maybe the December pay per view is Kid versus uh, Razor. Kid Razor, and you can still do Brett Bulldog. Like, just make it a personal issue. Yeah. And then if he doesn't leave, that changes everything. That's what I'm saying. So, like, if he's happier and he doesn't get popped for drugs. But, I mean, I think at the end of the day, they still would have thrown that big money at him. But there's so many little things. Like, if he's world champion, do they extend his contract? Like, does he really yeah. – does, does his contract really run out in early 96, right? You know, they're probably going to pay him. So, yeah, I mean, you could be talking no NWO if, if Razor turns heel and they get behind him as a champion more than a transitional. Like, in the world I said where he loses it, either he loses to Diesel at SummerSlam or he loses to Brett at Survivor Series – Maybe you stay more intact. Yeah, and I think that's on. I think that's what's likely. Yeah. That's the likely outcome because they're all in on Diesel, right? And Sean Brett. Yeah, but I think I think I would prefer the switch up. Yeah, I think Razor going heel at least makes ninety five a lot more fun because they didn't have that real captivating top heel because they turned Sean. They tried to make it Sid. He just wasn't clicking that year. They turned yeah. Bigelow. So it's like Mabel and Sid through the back until Bulldog turns at least like adds a little bit more. But an even Bulldog is not a top level heel. Right? <laughs> not like at that point anyway. Yeah. See, and that's that's I mean that's probably he's a heel. He's a top level heel if Brett is the champion, but in like any other circumstance, he's almost not. I mean, there's another what if in here. That's probably another show we could do. But like, what if Luger turns heel? Um, at WrestleMania after WrestleMania 11 or whatever, going into WrestleMania 11, he challenges Undertaker and kind of goes back to maybe the narcissist character. Like, is there any juice left in that? Does he leave in 95 and show up on Nitro if he's like in the middle of a heel push? What if he fights Diesel at SummerSlam as a heel? Yeah, I mean, and then what if Bulldog turns with him and they do like a heel stable like Luger and Bulldog, but as heels, right? The United Nations, yeah. I mean, I think, I think. Razor's interesting, but I think you could almost sub him for any of those guys. Like we Bulldog gets there eventually, but like Luger turning heel or Razor turning heel to me kind of gets yeah. There. I think Razor's better because I think the character and, and the work would be better during that time period. But I mean Luger's pretty great as a heel in 95 WCW. So it depends how motivated he gets, I guess. Well, and you gotta then again, he'd be fighting guy. Like Luger's the type of guy who can I think who can have really great matches depending on the opponent, right? Right. Um, I think that like a WrestleMania where Shawn Michaels is trying to dethrone Lex Luger probably gives us an all-time classic. Right. Like, because I think Luger always excelled when he was in there with flair and Shawn is kind of that archetype. Like I know he's different, but like that's when I, when I rewatched the 94 rumble, all I think about the whole time is like, Oh, it's such a shame. We never got like a pay-per-view match with Luger and Shawn. Yeah. Because yeah. like they just click so well, and and in that instance, it's it's Luger is the heel and Sean is the face. But I uh, excuse me, Luger is the face and Sean is the heel. But I think it'll work even better the other way around with Luger being the bully and obliterating him. Right. Yeah, I, I'm kind of torn now. Which one I like better, honestly, <laughs> Luger or <laughs> Razor turning heel? I mean, because I think you could argue that Razor was still super over as a face. Yeah. That it made more sense to keep him face. Um. And he did help he, get Goldust over initially, like because he won he, matches in 1994 as right. opposed to Luger. <laughs> Imagine, um, but you lose Luger, you lose Razor Goldust, which really gets Goldust over that feud. Um, yeah. It ends up being Piper more than him, but I don't know. I kind of like the Luger heel idea too. I like both. I, I think both either one could have really helped 95. Yes, and and look, I mean, not to jump around so much, but like my stance has always been. If Luger is a heel all in 93, it's a much better year, too. Yeah. It's well, crazy if, how much of this revolves around Lex Luger being the center point of, like... Well, even if it wasn't 93, what if he just did sell out to DBS? <laughs> like, like yeah. they play like he did, and he's like, yeah, I fucking did. You know what I mean? He's like, I'm tired of, you know, this 
false promises or whatever, and I'm taking the money. Screw you. Every you know, time then he I'm saddled in a with DiBiase, yeah. though, but so it's like I got guys jumping in the ring at SummerSlam. I got a bad referee at WrestleMania 10 hurting me. Yeah, like I'm tired of getting and, screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired I mean, of getting screwed. I'm screwed by Psycho Sid. But the uh, I mean, then he's got the DiBiase stink on him, so I don't know if that works or not. But no, you don't want DiBiase in there. I think turning Luger after the Rumble makes sense. Like I came up short again. Maybe he gets a title match on Raw with Diesel, and he loses, and he snaps. Like kind of like what happens with Bulldog a little bit, but yeah. he just snaps and then beats the shit out of Diesel, and is like, "I'm done." Like I keep coming up short because I'm too concerned about the fans. I keep getting hosed. Maybe the corporation interferes. Maybe Sean interferes or something and costs him. And he get. I'm getting. I'm tired of getting screwed, you know. And then he. He yeah. turns into Mania and challenges Taker. Yeah, but then he's going to lose that match. Like, Yeah, I think different than Razor, I think Luger would have to win. Yeah, because especially if you're running the – I lost to the – because you just ran in 94. I lost to the champ, and now I'm, right. I snap, right? And now I get a – with Backlund. So you have to – yeah, he'd have to beat Taker. Because if he just loses to the champ and demands a title shot, he becomes that second-tier challenger yeah. again. Unless you do Luger Bulldog at Mania and he just beats him clean to like kick off his heel run is like a reboot, like almost like rude snook at sick, you know, something like that where the heel gets the big win at Mania, not big win, but like a clean win over a top face at Mania to like kick off the summer run. So maybe Luger just beats, puts Bulldog down at Mania and then you maybe know, he goes too far. Diesel. Maybe he goes too far at Mania. Like he racks him for too long, he hospitalizes him. And he's like, I'm, I don't care anymore. Like something along those lines. Yeah. Well, you could do like a, a Ray and Eddie with them, right? right? They fight as friends at Mania for a title shot, and it's kind of contentious, but they're still friendly. And then they fight again at In Your House One or something, and that's when Luger turns officially on him, you know. And then he kind of builds to SummerSlam. Is Luger easier. is Luger going to be revealed to be Davy Boy Smith Jr.'s father? I think we just find out he's bizarre. No. Okay. We'll see you next time here no, on that, the I, I, Card I, Special Edition. What if? Talk to you soon. Subscribe.